The earth is made of the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, which includes the lower and upper mesosphere and the asthenosphere, and the lithosphere, which includes the upper mantle and the crust. The farther down you go, the hotter it gets, and once you reach the mantle, you begin to see molten rock. The core is made of dense iron, and its temperature can reach 4,300 degrees Celsius, 7,772 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason it gets so hot is that pressure becomes so intense in a dense area where heat cannot escape, but hot air rises. That's why there's a convection cycle. Warm material rises up to the edge of the mantle, then cools, solidifies some, and sinks back below to where it's hotter, because cold air sinks. The repeating process is what pushes on the tectonic plates that comprise the Earth's crust. Tectonic plates, convergent boundaries are where two plates are colliding. These two plates can both be oceanic, one oceanic, and one continental, or both continental. The effect can vary depending on how fast the plates are moving and how large they are. For example, today's Atlas Mountains in northwestern Africa and the Appalachian Mountains in the eastern United States were formed as one range when the North American and African plates collided about 300 million years ago. Scientists are pretty certain that the peaks of this range were much, much larger than the Himalayas, the largest mountains in the world today, because both the plates are very large, which gives them a lot of force. In the Himalayas, the Indian plate is slamming into the Eurasian plate, continuously building them. Now, the Eurasian plate is very large, but the Indian plate is nowhere near as large as either the North American or African plate, so the force of the former collision is smaller than that of the latter. Convergent boundaries can also cause volcanoes by creating a subduction zone. A subduction zone is where the oceanic plate and a continental plate are coming together. But, since the oceanic plate is much denser, it dives underneath the continental plate. There are three types of volcanoes on Earth. The composite, or stratovolcano, the shield volcano, and the cinder cone volcano. Stratovolcanoes have magma chambers that spew both gassy, pyroclastic material and more fluid material, lava. The first eruption from one magma chamber begins to form a mountain. Over time, multiple eruptions build the mountain upward, and it accumulates layers of pyroclastic material and lava with many types of rocks and minerals within. Mount Hood in the Northern Oregon Cascades is just like this. Its rock is about half a million years old, and its magma chamber has been very active in the past 1,500 years, last triggering an eruption in 1866. The U.S. Geological Survey considers Mount Hood potentially active and the most dangerous volcano in Oregon. A cinder cone volcano erupts only pyroclastic rock, for example, pumice. Lava Butte on the highway south of Bend is a cinder cone. A shield volcano only erupts runny lava and tends to be less steep-sided. An example is Diamond Peak near Willamette Pass. Weathering and erosion. Some mountain ranges are still being built, but all have been destroyed by two main processes, weathering and erosion. Weathering is a breakdown of material by means of gravity, water, wind or chemicals. Water is a major weatherer. It can seep its way into cracks in rocks and freeze into ice. The expanded ice can widen the cracks like a wedge splitting wood. Another way water weathers rocks is by carrying sand and other rock particles over a larger rock surface, slowly breaking off tiny pieces of the big rock. Even just pure water can eventually break off rock and wash it away. Erosion. The other force destroying mountain ranges is the movement of natural material. Gravity is a very common type of erosion. Let's say a small rock at the top of a cliff in Yosemite National Park receives a huge gust of wind that blows it over the cliff. This movement is erosion of the cliff. The rock was part of the cliff, but is now at the bottom of the canyon. Erosion isn't the destruction material, it is the movement. Weathering takes care of the destruction. The Hawaiian Islands are a perfect example of how these forces affect mountains. They are created by volcanic eruptions from the Hawaiian hotspot, thought to be a mantle plume in the asthenosphere, that feeds magma through the Pacific Plate. 
The plate with the islands on top of it has been moving roughly westward, where the hot spot remains in place. This explains why the western Hawaiian islands are older than the eastern ones, which is why the western ones are smaller. They've had more time to be weathered and eroded. The hot spot is currently under the big island, the geologically youngest island, and has been feeding its huge volcanoes, such as Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. One day, the western islands of Hawaii will disappear under the ocean surface, and the big island will be much smaller. New volcanoes will be born in the east, and they will resemble the big island.